Let's apply what we know about time series and construct a time series model. What I'm going to do is construct a very simple time series regression model. And let's say we want to explain uh, GDP at time t of the United States um, from 1880 to 1913. And what might explain GDP of the United States? Well, maybe some uh, productivity index is a good explanatory variable. So we're going to explain GDP by productivity at time t. So uh, we've collected um, yearly data for both time series. So what we're going to do now? Um, well, first we have to make sure that our data is stationary. So we apply the augmented dicky fuller test, and you're already familiar with that one. And the test statistics tells us that both variables contain a unit root. So what do we do now? Well, simply trending is unfeasible because the variables are not trend stationary. And remember, then what we have to do is we have to take the first difference. So we would then take the first difference. Um, and what we do is we just transform our data so that um, GDP at time t is equal to GDP at time t minus GDP at time t minus 1 and we notate this by adding this capital delta up there and what I like to do is include a little one over there so people know we're actually dealing with um, the first difference of our time series. Um, so remember that our data ranges from 1880 to 1913 and since it has no prior data point to 1880 so when t is equal to 1880 um, there is no data point prior to that one. So what it actually is, is or R will tell us that the first data point when we take the first difference is NA, it's not available. Okay? Okay, now um, we rerun the ADF test on the uh, first differences of both variables and it tells us that our data is stationary. So we, w we would conclude that both GDP and productivity is integrated of order one and we would notate this by saying I open parenthesis one so integrated of order one but how would our regression equation look like so how would our regression equation look like if we want to explain GDP at time t by productivity at time t well that's fairly easy our uh, regression equation would look like this so we're explaining the change or the first difference of GDP at time t by some constant alpha, that's called alpha 1, plus beta 1. And we're explaining it by the first difference of productivity, and let's call that variable prot at time t, and we include an error term. Okay, so this is this is our model. We postulate that there is a contemporaneous relationship between productivity and GDP. So let's say we measure both variables as an index number and let's say that alpha 1 is actually equal and not alpha 1, beta 1, sorry, is actually equal to 0.2. Okay, so both are measured as index numbers and beta 1 is statistically significant and equal to 0.2. How do we interpret this? Well, fairly easy the same way we would interpret when we were using the untransformed uh, data. It basically says that if you change the productivity index at year t by one unit, the GDP index at year t will change by 0.2 units. I think the time series first difference interpretation is even more straightforward than the um, normal regression interpretation because we are actually relating changes to each other. Okay, great. We estimated uh, or we constructed our first um, time series model and we estimated the um, coefficients, but can you raise some concerns regarding this model? Well, the obvious concern would be, and you're already familiar with that, um, would be omitted variable bias, right? So omitted variable bias. 
um, middle variable bias because there are most certainly other very important variables that influence the change in GDP. Leaving these out of our regression equation will uh, lead to serious bias. The estimate of beta 1 uh, might be completely bogus in terms of uh, the actual underlying relationship. So how can we account for that? Well, I would say just include these omitted variables. And another major concern is that this model is only capturing the, so this model over here is only capturing the contemporaneous relationship between both variables. But there might be a relationship that is distributed over time. So maybe changes in GDP at time t are also driven by changes in productivity at time t minus 1, so one year before that. So how do we include this effect which is distributed over time? Well, that's pretty easy. Include what we call a lagged lacked variable. So you include a lagged variable in the model. So the model basically becomes the change in GDP at time t is equal to some constant alpha, alpha 1, plus beta 1, the change in productivity at time t. So this, this has not changed yet, right? This is until this point, this is basically the same model. So you're relating the changes in productivity at time t to the uh, changes in GDP at time t. Okay, this is this is normal. But now what we're going to do is we're going to include another variable. So beta two times the change in productivity at time t minus one, and of course we got to include an error term. Okay, so this is another model. Do you see what I just did? Well, I've included the changes in productivity in the same year. So I've included as explanatory variables the changes in productivity at year t and the changes in productivity at t year t minus 1. Okay, so this is, this is what I just did. And think about the interpretation of the coefficients. It's a ceteris paribus interpretation. We talk about an effect while holding all other effects constant. So the effect of beta 2 is the, um, is the effect of past productivity while holding the contemporaneous productivity effect constant. Now, why is that so important? Well, let's draw a correlogram um, of GDP and productivity, where uh, we change the value uh, or the value of the lags from zero to well, some some arbitrary value. Okay, so let's plot um, the correlogram. Okay, so what we do is we just take the correlation between so we take the correlation between changes in GDP at time t and changes in productivity at time t minus i. And what we're going to do is we're going to change i, okay? So i is on the x-axis and the y-axis is the correlation. So, okay, this looks, this looks bad. Let me draw another figure, okay? So i is on the x-axis and the correlation coefficient is on the y-axis, so ranging from 0 to 1 and i is also ranging from 0 to, oops, sorry, ranging from 0, so the contemporaneous correlation to some arbitrary lag. Okay, let's, let's include 7 lags, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna we're just gonna calculate the correlation between the changes in GDP at time t and, and uh, the the changes in productivity at time t minus i. So the first one would be the uh, contemporaneous correlation. So the correlation between the changes in GDP at time t and the changes in productivity at time t, and that might be equal to this value over here. 
Now what we're going to do is we're just going to calculate the correlation between the changes in GDP at time t and the, um, um, the, the changes in productivity at time t minus 1. So the first lag, and this might be over here, and the second one might be over there. I'm just going to keep doing that for every single lag. Okay, so this again, this is the correlation between changes in GDP and changes in productivity without holding all other coefficients constant. So just a correlation between, or just a bivariate correlation. But how would that same diagram look like if we account for the um, for the um, correlation between GDP and the changes in productivity before? So what we're now interested in is the partial correlation so the unique correlation so holding all other effects constant so let me draw that for you so again this is a very important difference so we're still dealing with i equals one two three four five six and seven now we're still dealing with the correlation. So this has not changed yet, okay? And the, cor the contemporary contemporaneous correlation between the changes in GDP and the changes in productivity, so when i is equal to zero, is the same as before. Though this has not changed. But take a look at the correlation between uh, GDP at time t and uh, changes in productivity at time t minus one. So this is dropped significantly because this is the partial correlation. It's the correlation between the changes in GDP at time t and the changes between productivity at time t minus one while accounting for the correlation between the changes in GDP at time t and the changes in productivity at time t. So this is what we call the partial correlation. Okay, so this is the unique correlation. This is another way to think about it. It's, it's the unique correlation. And you see that this will pretty soon drop to zero because including further lags does not yield any additional information. So what did what just happened? You see, the first diagram just gave us the bivariate correlation between two variables, nothing more. But the second diagram gave us the partial correlation. So the distinct information gain of every lag um, by holding all formal lag or the effect of all formal lags constant. And you can see that there is a unique uh, that there is no unique information gain after including one lag. Now you see this pretty much pre, the, the, it pretty uh, fast decreases to zero while not accounting for the par well, partial correlation just the, the, just the B variate correlation this, is, this decreases very slowly while the partial correlation decreases pretty fast. Okay? So if we include all the variable lags, so if we would include not only the, the uh, contemporaneous relationship, but also the uh, first lag, we would say that if, if we include all, include all the necessary lags, so it could be that you need further lags, if we do that, we would say that our model is dynamically complete. What would happen if we did not include all the necessary lags? Well, <clears throat> we would most likely end up with serial correlated errors. Now, I know this concept might be a bit weird at first, but it's very, very important. Again, take a look at the cor at the um, at our equation over there. Okay, so at our regression equation, the effect of beta two right here is this effect. <clears throat> Sorry, it's not this effect over there, okay? It's not. So it's the unique effect of past changes in productivity. So it's the effect of past changes in productivity while holding the effect of um, con the contemporaneous changes in productivity constant. And this is very, very important.